So we have Jeff, who is with, uh, he's going to be moderating. He's with USA Today. He's a tech columnist. He has some of the absolutely most uh, entertaining writing on USA Today. I highly recommend it. He's never read a word. <laughs> I'm it right now. Um, let me tell you, entertaining though. Um, and then up here, we have uh, three individuals with Hop, Skip, Drive. And um, they have a lot of things going on today, so I'm not going to speak too much. But um, to say the least, I actually did a project on them in college, and they're an incredible brand. They're making parents' lives easier, uh, getting their children to where they need to be. So with that, I'm going to let them all take it away. All right. Well, since we didn't get everyone's name, Andrew, let's just jump right into it. Janelle is sitting right next to me, Jan Janelle McLaughlin, and Joanne McFarland. And on the end, we've got Carolyn Shari Becker. Becker, Becker, Becker. Okay, and today we're talking about creating a truly mission-driven business um, that is Hop, Skip, Drive. I mean, you, you guys, the three of you, wanted to provide a solution to the problem that so many parents have, which is hauling your kids around and paying Uber is not a possibility because they've got rules that they're not going to pick up uh, under 13, right? Under 18. Under 18, okay. So a real need um, at the same time that Hop, Skip, Drive launched it was a similar service in San Francisco, Shuttle. Um, they found they couldn't make it, and you guys bought their assets. Um, you're still here, you're still thriving. Why don't you tell everybody about your biz and, and how it's going? Sure. Well, Hop, Skip, Drive is a ride service for kids, so kids six and up. Uh, we uh, match rides with uh, caregivers. So they're seasoned caregivers. They have at least five years of caregiving experience. We fingerprint them. We do full background checks. Uh, you know, we really built this business for our own kids to solve our problem, and so we you know, put every safety measure in place that we thought was important for feeling comfortable as a, as a mom putting my child in, in the care of this person and in their car. And so that really, I think coming at it from that perspective has a very different kind of view of the business and, you know, what's important to your target audience and, and why you think about things the way that you do. I think it's my big question uh, is, if Shuttle couldn't make it, why can you? What do you know that they, I mean, they were having problems, obviously, and you're still here. So, Joanne? Sure. Right? No, I, I mean, I think that's very uh, relevant to this panel, right? I mean, I think we set out, um, you always hear about missionary founders, mercenary founders. I think we set out to solve our own problem. We have eight kids between us. They go to five different schools. They participate in, I think, 17 at last count extracurricular <laughs> activities. And we just honestly couldn't do it anymore. And we were all struggling as full-time working moms trying to figure this out. And so we set about to solve this problem and, and really came about it with this passion of making life easier for busy families. Um, I think, you know, uh, Shuttle was founded by somebody who, who wasn't a parent and who I think was, you know, looking to exploit a niche in an industry. And I think that's a very different approach to building a business. I think you make different decisions. And I think you design a product maybe a very different way. And... Uh, and, and I think they weren't able to survive you know, because of that and, and, and these are a few other things. But I think we're, I think that's what really truly differentiates us and, and is what makes our brand stand out because it really is authentic. I mean, our kids use the service all the time. So it had to be, we designed it really for our own kids and, and in doing that have solved the problem for, for thousands of other families in Los Angeles and Orange County and the Bay Area now. And so it really, you know, when we say safety matters, safety really does matter. Our kids are in these cars too. Um, and I think that approach is what really resonates with the families that use our service. And, um, and I think on the other side of that, you know, we are a two-sided marketplace. So I think our mission is to make life easier for busy families. And the other side of that mission is that we are also providing an income opportunity, uh, you know, primarily for women. And it's a way for women to participate in the sharing economy in a way that they feel safe, in a way that they are able to schedule their day, to make money on their own time, to do something that they really enjoy doing, um, and and uh, you know not necessarily have to worry about some of the safety issues of you know maybe a, a random stranger getting in their car. Okay, Carolyn, why don't you just tell us about the cost? Like how much does it cost to use the service, and then how much can drivers make? Sure. So. That's me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your cell phones off. <laughs> So um, we the ride started at $16 a ride, 
and go up from there based on time and mileage and a very similar structure that we're used to. Um, we have wonderful promotional carpool pricing now, so we're encouraging families to get their kids together in the same car, brings the price down uh, tremendously, and it gets more cars off the road, which is something we really like. Um, in the Bay Area, the pricing is a little bit higher given the market there. And um, drivers are making you know, up to $30 or more an hour, depending on how many rides they can package within an hour. And we're very proud of that as well. How many rides are going out of the day? We do uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of rides a day, thousands of rides a month. How do you convince a busy parent that um, you know th this will solve your problem? But you know, sixteen dollars a ride, that's thirty-two dollars round trip, five days a week. That's a lot of money. So the, the way to think about it, right, is this is always going to be more expensive than Uber X or Lyft. It just is because what we're providing is a completely different service. Our care drivers will walk into a school, sign a child out, they'll escort them onto the baseball field, and make sure that they're handed off safely to a coach. Um, the way to think about it really is it's an alternative to a full-time caregiver. So maybe you, you know, as your kids get older, you don't need a full-time babysitter or a full-time nanny. Maybe you can't even afford that anymore, but you still want to get your kid from, so you know, from school to soccer or to tutoring or to dance or, or something that is very important to them. But you know, you're in the office and it's 3.30 and you have no way of getting them there. And so the way to think about it is this is an alternative to having, you can't hire somebody, it's very hard to hire somebody just for that 30 minutes a day that you need to get your kids safely from point A to point B. And so you can try and what you find is you know, if that person flakes, maybe you find that college kid, but now their semesters change, their seasons change, you're sort of, you're starting all over again. And so what we provide is we provide that service exactly when you need it. You don't need that 20 hour a week nanny or 40 hour a week nanny. And so if you compare the cost to that, it's actually quite reasonable and quite affordable. And how does the kid, does the parent just arrange that at three o'clock you're going to pick, pick up John at three and then arrange that somebody else is going to pick them up at four or five? Depends on the parent, really. I mean, so you go in the app and you um, set the, the ride up the day, at least by 7 p.m. the day before. Um, and you can look out for the full school year. So you can set up a recurring ride if I know I need it every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, going from school to piano. I can set that up for as long out as I want to. Um, and then you are matched to a driver, and then you'll see a picture of the driver that is you're matched to, and so that you can show your child and let them see the person, and they'll know, oh, today it's Margie that's picking, picking you up and taking you to piano. Um, and oh, you know, by the way, Margie is actually a pediatric nurse, and she's from France originally. So you get a little bit of background on the person, so you can introduce them to your child. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, depending upon what your schedule is, so for my kids, a lot of times I will have someone take them to their activity, and then I can get there by the time the activity's done, but I don't have to do both ends of it, and so that actually saves me. I don't have to leave the office early. I don't have to negotiate with my, with my husband. It's like, okay, who, you know, whose job's more important today, or who's got the, the tighter deadline, or what, what's happening in our lives? You know, really we have this, this way of making that much easier. So we don't have to say no. Um, we don't have to beg, borrow, and steal from you know, the friends that, that we need carpools from, that we can't really always be the other person to reciprocate. This gives us an opportunity to give our kids the chance to, to do all the activities that they want to do, to explore things, to you know, go to the schools that they want to be at, that they feel best with their needs. So really it's about opening up those opportunities for families to, to be able to say yes to kids and let them explore life. So we're here at a startup conference, and I'm sure everybody wants to know um, how to get to the next level. You guys are, what, two years old now? Almost. Yeah. Right? So why don't you talk about the challenges of just getting this off the ground, <laughs> and what you guys think you need to do to get to that next level? Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> which challenge do you want to hear about? Uh, no, I mean, I, look, I, I think that's part of, for us, I think it was so important to have, to be mission driven and to be passionate about what we were doing because this is really hard. Like it is much easier to have a normal day job and to do that job and then go home and you don't really, you know, you're not worried about uh, raising money so you make payroll. You're not worried about, um, you know, whether you can build that brand, whether you can get paid. Like you are doing so many things and, and you are overcoming a challenge every single day. It's all about like what is the problem that we're solving today. How are we best going to solve that? What do we learn from that? How do we not repeat mistakes that we've made? And then how do we move on? And so I think 
Um, you know, that for me, at least, like I couldn't do this if I wasn't so passionate about the problem that we're solving that I literally cannot imagine doing anything else. Um, and I think that's what drove us as you, as you hit each of those challenges. I mean, the first one, you know, it was incredibly hard for us to get insurance at the beginning. Uh, there weren't very many people writing ride share insurance, and then nobody wanted to touch unaccompanied minors. And it took us, you know, several months and beating down doors and cold calling and, and just not taking no for an answer um, until we, we found the right partner to get insurance. Um, you know, fundraising is, is a challenge in and of itself, and it's never easy, no matter who sits up here and tells you it's easy and term sheets are falling from the sky. Like, they're not. Uh, and so um, it's, it's all about. Uh, being persistent, not taking no for an answer, figuring out a different way to get to yes, figuring out a different creative way to solve that problem, and just not giving up. Okay. Um, Uber has gotten where they are based on raising a lot of money, right? And Lyft is having a really hard time catching up to them. You're in that same biz. So is money the answer to get to the next level? So I actually don't think we're in that same business. Uh, you know, Yes, today we are, pro we are providing transportation, but really what we're doing is we're solving, we're making life easier for busy families, and I almost see us more in the child care space. So we, we play in a couple of different spaces. We're in mobility, we're in child care services, we're in family services, we're in uh, you know, tech-enabled services, if you will. So I, I think it is a very different space. It's a very different service. I don't think we are in kind of a, a race to the pricing bottom. This is something that, you know, as a parent, you don't want the $5 an hour babysitter. That's sort of scary. Um, you, you, know, you don't want the like 50% off today because you start to then wonder about the quality. So you know, this is something that I think families are, are willing to pay a premium for, which makes it easier to make unit economics make sense and makes it easier to grow the business. OK. Well, Janelle and Carolyn, what do you need to do to get to the next level? What do you say? Um, I think it's really, you know, it's, it's growth and it, and and building trust with more families. And so scaling what we have developed already to you know, more families in the areas that we're already operating and then looking to other markets as well. I mean, we have heard from families all over the country. This is a universal problem that everyone is facing. And so really it's about scaling, but scaling smartly. Because safety is such an inherent part of what we do and the trust is really at the core of it, that we have to be wise in the way that we bring on drivers and that we you know we only bring on drivers that we feel comfortable putting people we love in the car. Do the three of you interview them? Not all of the drivers now, but in the beginning. Sure. We did. We did. <laughs> yeah. And um, I can speak to that as well. I mean unlike many startups, we're actually subject to significant regulations in the state of California. Uh, the same TNC regulations that Uber and Lyft are dealing with, they actually affect hot skip drive as well. And as we do look at expansion we look at other states where businesses like ours don't exist, and we really are paving the way for the transportation of minors in the country. And so we're working with regulators and lawmakers all over um, how to best build this space in a way that keeps kids safe and really drives innovation and doesn't get in the way. So I'm in Indiana, and I say, hey, there's a great need here, and I can prove it to you. Come on over, <laughs> and you say, uh, Indiana, Phoenix, I don't care, yeah. Baltimore. We get, we get those emails. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. We get yeah. every week. And the more people you get on board, the faster we'll be there. Uh, what, what do you need to do to get to it, to get outside of California and get to it other markets? What needs that? I mean, I think you'll see that from us very soon. I mean, it's just it's continuing to do what we're doing. But what happened? Tell me. Everybody wants to know. <laughs> what, if you're going to explore another market, do you need to know that you can hire 200 drivers? You yeah, so when, when we look at new markets, I mean, I think this is a business that is incredibly hyper-local. It is neighborhood by neighborhood, and we don't just go into a new city and say, we are in the entire city. You can book, you know, we, we started on the east side of L.A., and we slowly made our way west, and then we went north, and then we went south, and we did the same thing in Orange County, and we did the same thing in, in the Bay Area. We started in the east Bay and in the city, and then we, we spread out. So it's all about, you know, you, you need to bring on the supply first, because you have to have supply to meet the demand. And then you go out and you uh, and you reach out to demand, and, and we've done that in a way that has been very um, grassroots and community driven um, in, in the markets that we're in, and um, and and then you continue to expand within that market. And what's the next market? Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. 
uh, you did tell me out there that San Francisco is, <coughs> has been challenging, more challenging than Los Angeles. So here we are in LA at the start of this. Yeah. Why, why is San Francisco more challenging than LA? So more challenging in different ways, for sure. Every market is challenging. Every neighborhood is challenging. Um, but I think you know San Francisco, <coughs> because Shuttle was there, we walked into a market that had a lot of pent up demand, and so meeting that demand with our standards um, has has been a challenge. We have not brought on. You know, we continue to meet that challenge every single day. We continue to bring on drivers as fast as we can, but you know we're not going to sacrifice quality. Uh, and, and, and do something that would not be good for the business and good for the brand. And how do you find drivers? Um, we use a lot of different channels to recruit drivers. So we look at digital channels, we do referral systems as well with other pair drivers. Um, you know, we've done offline with direct mail. You know, we've really tested a lot of different ways to reach those different audiences. And the interesting thing is, and you know, depending on the market, the, the return on those is going to be different. You know, you'll find in, in the Bay Area, it's a much more, um, you know, probably tech, I mean, tech savvy, like obviously, right, marketplace. People, the, the drivers themselves are much more familiar with technology, much more um, astute about, app, you know, apps and using them. And so it's, it's really looking at each market um, individually and determining, you know, what's the best way to connect with people in that market. Um, you know, a lot of the things in terms of recruiting families and finding the needs, you know, moms and dads talk. And when there's a solution that's provided, they really are you know, about sharing with each other about, oh my gosh, I found this. And so that referral, that, that word of mouth has been a huge asset for us um, and really getting people to, to build that virality into you know, their own day to day on a community by community basis. Are all you drivers women? 99%, 99. yeah. Okay. And for that 0.1% male? Um, you do have, have to worry, you know, you, you do background checks, I assume. I mean, the, the day doesn't yeah. provide an Uber, yeah. doesn't, there's not some article about yeah. some crazy Uber driver, so. I mean, we put every driver, regardless of who they are, they, they go through a 15 point certification process. So, to be a driver for a skip drive, you have to have five years of child care experience. You have to be at least 23. You have to, you know, we fingerprint every single driver and we put them on the trust line registry, which is the gold standard for child care background checking in the state of California. We were the first rideshare company to fingerprint our drivers. That's something that we're very proud of. Um, we do driving record checks. We do reference checks. We meet every single driver in person. We do far more than most people do to vet any younger user. Um, and, and that's part of that trust that when, when parents hear that, that's what you know makes them comfortable putting their kid in the car with a trusted caregiver, even if it's a trusted caregiver they may not have met. Why don't the three of you talk about how you split your duties? <laughs> That's the easy part. Yeah. Um, um, so, First of all, I mean, we have the three of you together. It doesn't happen every day, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of dividing and conquer. There's a lot of dividing and conquer. So you sure it does. we have extremely yeah. complementary skill sets, uh, and I think that's. Um, been really key to our success, and it's very clear which swim lanes each one of us is in. Uh, so I'm an attorney by trade, and I'm general counsel to the company. Uh, I do all the traditional lawyer type jobs, but um, also run people operations, so traditional HR onboarding, offboarding of corporate employees, um, as well as all of the regulatory and policy issues that should come up. So whether it's at the state level, local level, um, dealing with the Public Utilities Commission, or even just policies with respect to drivers, families, you know, what are our expectations of all of them, and even internally as a company, what are our expectations of our employees. My background's in branding and strategy, so I am on the marketing side of things and developing the story and the, and the brand itself, um, and helping to build that trust with our um, audiences, both in terms of the parents that we're talking to, as well as the care drivers. Um, that, that we bring onto the platform. So really it's about you know, bringing everyone into the fold of the brand itself and how that every experience that they have uh, with Hopskip Drive is a powerful one and one that is about trust and empathy and care. And Joanna does everything else. Yeah, I, I draw the short straw to do everything else. <laughs> to do. So, no, I you mean, answer the phone, so you open <laughs> the door. Right? Yes, yes, yes. 
Uh, so I'm the CEO, and I, you know, I handle strategy, kind of running the business on a day-to-day basis, fundraising, uh, external press, and, and all of that. But I think, you know, I, I think one of the things that I think also has made us successful is that we have very complementary skill sets. So if there is the, the swim lanes are very clear, which I think is good. There's no like, well, I should be doing that or I should be doing that. But I think also we spent several months. We didn't know that we were dating at the time, but we were founder dating. Uh, you know, we we. And, and we joked that we were dating before we decided to get married, but um, you know, Janelle and I knew each other. Our, we met when our oldest children were in music class as babies, um, so we had been friendly uh, for you know eight years before starting this business, and, and we met Carolyn a few months later through an advisor, but we spent several months having dinners and lunches and breakfasts and talking about our vision and how we saw things and how we would argue about things, and yeah, you want to make sure that you can fight well, um, it's it's not unlike a marriage, and you're going to be in this for the long haul, and there's going to be high highs, and there's going to be low lows, and often those come within five minutes of each other, and <laughs> every day, and you need to be able to have really, really hard conversations, but also feel very good about them when you're walking away, and I think that's what makes us successful. I mean, yesterday, we, we had a difficult conversation, and we didn't agree with each other, and we got up, and we hugged, and then we walked away, and we kind of yeah. went so, uh, <laughs> um, I, I, but I think that's yeah. really important, and I think that's where you see a lot of companies um, struggle, and I think that's something that I'm incredibly proud of, is the, the relationship and the partnership that the three of us have built. I'd like to open up to questions. We're actually, we're actually running out of time, and we do want to respect your schedule, so if you guys have any closing statements that you might want to make right before you go. Okay. Yeah. Well, Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, Janelle, you've got tons of options for marketing and advertising, and uh, Google AdWords and Facebook are getting expensive as anything, mm-hmm. depending on the keywords, the audience you reach, whatever. How do you manage those costs, and which avenues are working best for you right now? Is it online? Is it offline? Is it direct mail? Is it referral? Is it yeah? What's working? Right. It is. It is incredibly competitive right now, and I think that is is absolutely a struggle. Um, you know, for us, the word of mouth is always the most powerful because you know what's going to get you to feel comfortable putting your child in the car is what your friends are doing. It's you know, so we really do lean on that very heavily. Um, you know, early on we had some great success with off, uh, offline direct mail. Um, you know, it hasn't been performing as well. I think I think really the answer is being nimble and paying attention to the data and looking at the numbers and saying, okay, what's working right now and where do we need to shift? So it's really being smart about that and paying attention and knowing that not, you know, what works in one market is not going to just be replicated in another market, you have to try different strategies depending upon you know what's pulling at that moment in time. So it's not it's not an easy answer, unfortunately. And I think that's where getting creative and not giving up is, is really important. I mean, you know, when we had no money, um, we, we we couldn't we, we couldn't do digital marketing. Like we literally had no budget. We went to all of the uh, cardio dojos and gymnastics studios and talked to them because you know what, their incentives were highly aligned with us. And we got them to put us in their newsletters for free. And they didn't pay them a dime. We got access to their lists. And we also got their referred grant equity, right? You trust your dojo, so you hear about this, and you're more likely to trust it. And that was how we got the word out originally. And it worked very well. But it took creativity, it took thinking, because it's not an obvious channel. Um, but you know, that has been an incredibly successful channel for us. Um. Okay, so before they give us the hook, one, la- one last question. Yeah, I know as a mission-driven business, sorry, as a mission-driven business, I read that y'all were exploring a partnership with the County for Transport and Foster Youth, and I was just curious for an update on that and how that fits in with your long-term plans. Sure. Um, that process has just begun. Um, we were mentioned in a motion um, as part as a potential solution for the County of LA to transport foster youth to and from their visitations. Um, currently, they have county employees doing those drives, which um, fiscally is somewhat irresponsible, and uh, or I should say, not beneficial to the county, um, specifically because they're not actually doing social work type work in the cars, they're just driving. Um, because we have caregivers who are doing the driving for Hot Skip Drive, and, um, and we're willing to train them in whatever way the county would really need to um, get them to a place where the county would feel comfortable, um, they've been asked to look at companies like ours, um, specifically ours, as a potential solution. And we're in those conversations, I mean, as of this morning, still. Yeah. All right, so. And 
that's totally aligned with the mission of what we do, right? I mean, if our mission is to make life easier for families, families come in all shapes and sizes, and so we see that as completely aligned with, with our mission and, and something that we're really excited to partner with them on. Alrighty, and the folks at the Startup Festival have a mission to get the next panel over. <laughs> so thank you very much. A big hand for Carolyn. Yeah. <laughs>